Muslims in the UK are contributing to economic challenges for many British citizens by contributing little to government revenues while heavily relying on social benefits. This creates a situation where non-Muslim communities are funding a significant portion of public services that a large number of Muslims, including some illegal immigrants, utilize. To illustrate this, consider that nearly half of the government's revenue comes from income tax and national insurance contributions. However, many Muslims fall into the lower income brackets, exempting them from paying substantial taxes. In fact, more than 25% of all income tax revenue is generated by the top 1% of earners, and 90% comes from the top 50%. Since a large portion of the Muslim population does not fall into these higher income categories, they contribute less to the tax system while still benefiting from it. Furthermore, Muslims represent about 6% of the UK population and are among the fastest growing communities. Even some illegal immigrants can access benefits such as free public education. The majority of the Muslim population in the UK comes from South Asian communities, particularly Pakistanis and Bangladeshis, who are among the poorest groups in the country. This economic hardship can be traced back to the fact that many of these immigrants came from rural areas of Pakistan and Bangladesh with limited financial and cultural resources to help them thrive in a new environment. For instance, a large number of Pakistanis hail from rural Kashmir, while most Bangladeshis come from the Silhet region. If you're interested in a deeper dive into why Indians tend to be wealthier than Pakistanis and Bangladeshis, I've already uploaded a detailed video on this topic. One interesting point to note is that over 90% of Indian restaurants in the UK are actually owned by Bangladeshis, contributing more than $5 billion to the UK's GDP. After South Asians, African and Arab Muslims make up a significant portion of the Muslim population in the UK, but they too are often economically disadvantaged, ranking just above Pakistanis and Bangladeshis. As a result, most Muslims in the UK fall below or just outside the tax threshold, meaning they contribute very little in taxes, but still receive the same social benefits as everyone else. Additionally, many Muslim women do not work outside the home and have large families, further relying on welfare benefits. While these benefits might seem modest within the context of the UK's overall government revenue, they represent a significant improvement over the living conditions in poorer countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, and various African nations. This disparity in living standards is one reason why many people from these regions, including illegal immigrants, are so eager to move to the UK and other Western countries. Some even lie about their realities to gain refugee status, contributing to the booming industry of human trafficking from the developing world to the West. Meanwhile, the UK continues to face a significant influx of illegal immigrants, many of whom are Muslim and are housed in hotels, while local British citizens, including mostly white Britons, are left homeless and living on the streets. Because a high proportion of Muslims are economically disadvantaged, there is a greater likelihood of involvement in crime. People living in poverty often resort to desperate measures for survival, especially to get rich quick. Consequently, nearly 20% of prisoners in the UK are Muslim. These prisoners frequently attempt to convert non-Muslims, resorting to threats if unsuccessful. Muslims are often perceived as more rigid and extreme in their religious beliefs compared to followers of other faiths. This has led to numerous protests and riots unrelated to UK politics or society. For example, Muslims have organized large-scale rallies in support of Palestine against Israel, the Uyghurs against China, and Muslims against India. Additionally, conflicts within Muslim communities have erupted, such as those between Pakistanis and Bangladeshis, reflecting historical tensions in South Asia. The UK has the highest number of radical Muslim extremists in Europe, with thousands joining ISIS to fight in the Syrian civil war. Approximately 50,000 Muslim extremists are under surveillance, many of whom have been confirmed as radicals. This poses a significant threat to non-Muslim communities like Christians, Hindus, Jews, and atheists. These groups often feel unable to criticize Islam or Muslims due to the fear of lengthy prison sentences in the name of hate speech or racism. However, the suppression of non-Muslim communities will not indefinitely tolerate radical Islamic violence and threats. This could lead to several outcomes, conversion to Islam, the rise of extremist countergroups, mass exodus from Muslim populated areas due to perceived police inaction, or a combination of these. As a result, 
many Muslim areas may experience decreased economic activity, despite the success of Bangladeshi-owned Indian restaurants in urban centers. Investors and wealthy individuals from other communities may avoid Muslim neighborhoods due to concerns about violence, crime, strikes, and riots. This could divert investment abroad, negatively impacting the UK economy. Furthermore, companies may be reluctant to hire Muslim employees due to perceived workplace challenges related to religious beliefs, potentially exacerbating tensions. So, the presence of Muslim communities has contributed to a decline in safety, investment, and living conditions compared to the past. As the Muslim population grows, so too do associated problems, as evidenced in many European countries today. Islam itself is often linked to economic disadvantage. I have uploaded a separate video to this channel that explores this topic in detail. For instance, a disproportionate number of Muslim women in the UK are not employed but have larger families compared to other groups. They frequently rely solely on government benefits. Mosques and Muslim missionaries often encourage high birth rates, aiming to create a Muslim majority within the next few decades. This demographic shift has political implications. Muslims predominantly vote for Muslim candidates, leading to a significant Muslim representation in the House of Commons. These politicians often adopt lenient policies towards the Muslim community, including advocating for the application of Sharia law in certain disputes. Given the importance of voter turnout in democracies, major political parties are increasingly willing to accommodate the demands of Muslim communities, even if these include extreme or dangerous Islamic ideologies. The growing political influence of Muslims is evident in the election of Humza Yusuf as First Minister of Scotland and Sadiq Khan as Mayor of London. Additionally, many Muslims in the justice system favor Sharia law over British law. This trend could transform the UK into a predominantly Islamic country, potentially harming the economy. Foreign investors may be deterred from investing in a country perceived as increasingly Islamic, resulting in significant economic losses. Additionally, many Muslims have lower levels of education, and Muslim women often face significant educational disparities and are treated as domestic servants within their communities. This contributes to a larger workforce with lower skills, potentially impacting overall productivity. As this trend persists, non-Muslims may bear a disproportionate burden in terms of higher taxes to fund welfare programs, including those benefiting Muslims who may not contribute to the tax base. Consequently, there has been growing discontent among native British residents regarding the rise of Islamic extremism and illegal immigration, primarily involving young Muslim individuals. If you are from the UK, please share your opinion on this video and the increasing Muslim population.